what's low budget at that point in time in your mind's eye? Was it five grand, 50 grand or 500? The, the common thing with, with every producer is that no one will ever say no. Because a lot of people started out uh, in our generation with the Super 8 movie. Sean and Stephanie were saying the last day. Yeah, watch the show! Woo-hoo. In the room, 52 Jokers Wild. It's another Friday, everybody, and thank you for joining us this week in the room. We have Sean Brennack. Hopefully I've got your name right there, Sean. Because <laughs> yes, sometimes you, have, you yeah. said that was difficult. It'll do, but, it'll do. We don't it'll care. Do, it'll do. We don't. Yeah, I'll be fine. <laughs> and this week, what's really good is we, we're talking to someone who's, who's made a feature film and has managed to get it into distribution. And it's currently on Amazon Prime at the moment, so you can get that available. I think it's free if you have Amazon Prime at the moment, which is pretty fantastic. And th- those are the things that we want to kind of talk about. One is, is getting into this industry. How do you need, what do you need to actually think about and all those kind of things, but also to try and get people to start to think a little bit more about, you know, everybody loves the film industry. It's a nice place to go to. It sounds really glammy, but when you really get down to the nuts and bolts of it, it is hard work and you have to love it and you have to have a passion. And I'm sure, Sean, that's what you had. You must have had a passion to get your movie off the ground and started. Tell us how it, how did it happen? How did it all come together? Um, I, I'll try. I'll give the shorter version of the story, uh, just so as I, I don't bore you all. But uh, it, um, I had been writing scripts for a long time in terms of the feature films. Now I've been making short films and, and music videos and that, but I wanted to make a feature like so many of us. Uh, and I had been writing these scripts, and they started off being kind of high budget Hollywood style films and I remember talking to the film board years ago and they were encouraging me to keep doing that they were like keep writing you know don't don't worry about budget keep keep going with this but in reality that's that's one way of going if you've if you if you've got an agent and and you know how to get scripts and and so few of those scripts are made every year that like in reality like writing films that that need you know 50 million plus you you know it's it's fun but it's not going to get you anywhere so I, I started trying to write something that I could film and and it took it probably took three or four maybe even more scripts feature film scripts before I realized because I'd write it and I think this is low budget this is definitely low budget I can make this and then I would start to work out the costs and I'd realize this is nowhere near low budget this is bananas and then I would strip it back even more and uh, you know it would inevitably it, it, it just was was something that wasn't possible for me to do, and all the time I'd I'd, I'd send it in to the to, to to the kind of funding bodies for funding, but uh, you know that wasn't happening. So in the end, I got frustrated, and I thought, well, I'm just going to have to film something that I can film with 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 brilliant actors that I've worked with on short films, with brilliant crew that I've worked with on short films, that people that I know that that would trust me, that we all work well together. Uh, that have a relationship with each other too so you know like the set is going to be a, a happy place and you're not going to have any problems there um, and the the inspiration came watching sci-fi film Coherence which was mostly set in, in the guy's own house and uh, it was the, the drama between the characters even though it was sci-fi it, it, um, it, it had elements of both but it still had a great story and uh, you could see how that could be achievable uh, and then I saw uh, the next day a story about a sinkhole opening in China. They were calling it the gates of hell. And I thought, I'll marry these two ideas. And I just started writing the script pretty much instantly. And I, I, and I would have been in the past very, very meticulous in terms of writing treatments, writing longer treatments, writing a script out of the treatments. With this one, I went into it sort of gung-ho in a way. I knew I knew where it would start and where it would end, but I hadn't planned out the journey. And I started writing it. And even when I was probably 40 or 50 pages into it, I started getting the cast and crew together. It's not it's not the way you'd normally do things. And I wouldn't do it now. But I'm going to stop you, Sean, because the yeah. accountant <laughs> is off already. Go, yeah. go for, There's the accountant going now, again. <laughs> I'm going to ask a question. What's low budget? Because I see... I, we just, myself and George were talking before this 
A low budget for a 15 million bu- like sort of mindset is 5 million. A low budget for a 5 million mindset is 500 grand. 500 grand is 50 and 50 is 5. If you do all the fives, if you're coming with nothing, you're going, I'm going to do this for 500 quid. And if it's it works up, you're working now back up. You started writing features because you, you were the artist, the creative. You wrote the story. And then you went afterwards and said, Jesus, this is a 50 million pound film. When I applied... The, the maths to the creativity but then you went you sent it off to the film board or whoever else they said i could keep doing that something from someone that has no risk or invested in it says you go off and do all your work you go off and figure it out you take all the risk we if we like it we might come back to you but if doesn't matter if you make no money and can't pay for the the, the bread and butter for the kiddies and all the rest of it so it's the risk reward keeps on moving back and forward you are doing a low budget. So we start, we go back to the beginning and go, what was your mindset of the figure? What's low budget at that point in time in your mind's eye? Was it five grand, 50 grand or 500? Uh, it's a, you're right. My, the, my idea of low budget had, had been, had been kind of pulling back all the time um, because I, I had been a part of the catalyst program and that they were 350 and that was, that was micro budget, you know? Um, but what it, it ultimately comes to the point where you're thinking it's something that I can achieve myself. So it wasn't really so much about the low budget as it was about something that I could do based on my own savings, kind of help from local businesses, yeah. uh, crowdfunding, and then pretty much everyone pitching in. You know, that's all brilliant. The you're building it from the sum of the parts up based on yes. I, it's what I have, it's what I can attract. If I want more, I've got to attract more. I have to sell a story. I cannot do it without it. Therefore, and that's what we're finding. An awful lot of people that are approaching us are going are just sending us unsolicited scripts, and what they're saying is we don't actually. The conversation could be, I'm not too sure. That could be a one million or a five million. I'm the artist. I'm the creator. That's my story. Sure, that's your problem to spend some money now to go figure out what that is. Because I don't know what it is. I just know it's great. Uh, And that's what we're we're getting an awful lot of that. And and we get a fright going. For us even to look at it could be two weeks to figure out what the question is as regards what a budget could be. You said 50 pages. And I'm going, if you were 50 grand and 50 pages, it's a grand a page of budget. If it's 100 pages, it doesn't matter what the cast and crew cost. If you've 100 pages, to get that page made, you just divide it by the page and go, that's all you have. It's 500 quid today, it's 1,500 tomorrow if you can move, if someone's bringing their own clothes with them. You know, if there's makeup, if it's in your handbag, you're putting it on yourself. There's no, there's no costume and there's no, there's, no, there's no makeup. So the great, I love, because the little bit I read about yourself is you said, feck this. You started talking business language. The minimum viable product is if I want to do something, I have to do it myself. I've got to do it with the budget I have. Because I, I've got to do and the great thing you said afterwards was the peop- my network to get work. I have this network of people are actually, if they're working in short space, more than likely are like yourself. They want to jump to the next level, but the space they're in is the journey from short to feature. So, and that's usually because we aren't, we're not proven or we're out of work or we need a bit of work or we're, hel- or, or, or we're given back. So I love it. You haven't got a proven something behind you yet to get it, to get to the next, to, for you to get from 50 to 500, you need a proven something you need to do. So the great thing here is you just went out and did it. And that's what I love. And that's where you are. And it's, but you have to be mindful of what you can do on your own shoestring. But well, I think, I think it'd be good to sort of explore that a little bit further because um, I, I, as well, went out and made a film called Fillers Walk. And I, like self, got very frustrated that there have been lots of promises of help, a lot of promises of people saying that they would fund something. I worked, I, I, I developed a project that uh, initially was going to be 50,000 in the year 2000. It then gradually went up to about uh, 5 million or, or more. It was being put into a conglomerate of stuff. And every time I went to the meetings, I was get gradually being pushed out. And so were all that collective. And in the end, I just went on and said, you know, that there, we, we're going to make a film. I probably did the same as you. I just went, right, let's just get a script together. What's the genre that we should use? My wife said chick flick. I said, right, OK, let's just make a chick flick because we can get everybody to watch it. But I went through, I did, I broke the film down. I worked out the cost. 
and I, I had a budget. It, 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 no, it didn't cost me this, but it was about 300,000 back in 2005. I think it was, we made it. And uh, what we started to realize was that, okay, each person was putting something in. They weren't asking for anything, but I needed to know that if we did make some money, I'm going to have to pay them back for that in kind at some point. It's not the way Garvin would want to work. And he's not suggesting that we do this. And this is not where I want to go at this point. It's just that, that this desire to get out there and make a movie, use all the skills I'd done that seemed to be being pushed away as technology was changing. And I just wanted to demonstrate that I could make movie. And that's what I went about doing. So tell us a little bit more about your process that you went through in those early days and, and how that 350,000 that you were being talked about looked as, and, and the, the relationship you had with the producers at that time. Yeah, it was interesting because like there was a lot of us there, there for that, for that particular, for the catalyst thing that was, the, the conference was in Croke Park. So you can imagine that like the amount of people that were going, they were only going to fund three projects in the end. So it was very tight. And when you went there first, everyone went separately. You, you know, some people came in teams, but most people didn't have their team. And I didn't have uh, my team. I had people with me uh, who were also uh, writers and directors. The free bar. And, we know the free bar was there. Yeah. That's what they <laughs> were doing. <yeah. laughs> they were there with their autograph books. There's going to be a bunch of stars looking for work, wandering around, sort of serving <laughs> drinks in Crow Park. <laughs> That's it. But um, uh, but luckily, you know, I did meet a, a very good producer there, and we had a, we had a good relationship, a good uh, a, a mutual respect, but also. Uh, you know, constant pushback from from each of us from from a good point of view, though. You know, uh, having said that, she was always telling me that it wasn't worth her while working on this project. She'd worked on TV shows, she'd worked in films, she'd worked on on ads. She was saying, "I love it, women. You're beneath me. You yeah. don't know who I am. You don't value me. I'm not your husband. I'm not your boyfriend. I'm paying your wage for what you're, ta- what you're talking about." <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember in, in 2001, there was a film made in Scotland and one of the um, one of the wardrobe department people was that negativity, just saying that, oh, this is not a, this is not a real movie, but it's being shot on Super 16. It was the whole thing was paid for. There were fairly well-known actors from the TV industry and the shoe was kind of going as 450,000 pounds for what it was made for. And, and she was just kind of rubbishing it. And yet, you know, lots of the people that were in there are now big, well-known actors who've gone on and carved their career in the industry. So, you know, that's, you know, you don't know who you're going to be working with and people have to start somewhere. So this is your journey. This is where you had to start. No, it's about me, George. Fuck him. We're back to me. You know, so, no, 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 go on. <laughs> the, the, the interesting thing is, uh, like, you're... I actually, I've lost my point there. I, I, I was just going to say something. And, <laughs> Good uh, word of like, stats in. Put in there, he threw the grenade in. He threw the grenade in. Oh, yeah. What I was going to say, what I was going to say was, I've talked to a lot of producers, as I, I suppose, I mean, you were saying yourselves that you get a lot of scripts and I uh, do the same and I get in touch with producers and talk to producers and all of them will say, well, the, the, the common thing with, with every producer is that no one will ever say no for exactly the reason, George, you were saying there. No one wants to say no to something or someone that could be, uh, you know, the next Breakthrough, big yeah. thing. Yeah. So, yeah. so th- that's the interesting thing. So you never get a no. I mean, you don't almost like to get a no as much as a yes. So at least you could say, okay. Sean, you know, no, it, you know, no. But, yeah. Sorry, no, no. It's, you, if you get a yes from us, you're bloody good. But you're well, go- it's, we start with no. It's going to take a lot to get a yes. This, this last two years has been me saying no to a lot yeah. of projects. To me. I, I, the problem take, is no, it's him saying no courage. to me. Mm. No, no, actually, there's a few other people because turn and work problems... away. The hardest thing in the world is actually to turn money away. That's actually but it, that's what you're really saying. That would, no, that's not even the, pro- the the reason why we started to turn it away. And again, this is just coming into conversation with Garvin was because we were being undervalued. There's, you know, I've got nearly 40 years experience of working in film and television from an editing perspective, directing little bits and pieces. He's an old man. He's got his pension card. Yeah. He gets free on buses for God's sake. Next year I will be. Next year I will be. I'm looking forward to it, you know, but we're still young (laughs) at heart. That's it. We're still a kid. I'm a six-year-old, really. And, but the thing is that I began to realize, look, 
all those promises of the next job being the one that will pay you and it doesn't it's not a reality it's just it's just a way of keeping you at a low end budget sort of thing and, and and we've started to realize look you know we have a worth and within the projects that we're starting to develop through the film production academy we will get our worth we will be we will be you know and we'll also make sure that the people working on the project get their worth so so although it's a small low budget we're going to work it in such a way that everybody will be valued and and there will be that need for that kind of positivity because i think we mentioned before that, that that kind of negativity can just get in there and 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 you know it's it's like that little thread in your jumper that you suddenly pull there's one just if i pulled that the whole jumper will fall apart type thing and that can happen in a movie and i know on our film projects you know we had a few people being a bit negative and we went you know we don't think you're right for the project thank you for your time Sorry, you can't help us this time, but who knows what the future might be. And we found somebody that was more positive and they did a better job. And Actually, think, there is a weird thing. The language yeah. there, is George, and I think Sean as well, is there's money and there's passion. There's creativity yeah. and creativity is fighting money when because money is usually the accountant and creativity is usually the artist. And the artist is going, this is my vision. And the accountant is going... That's great. It's inside your head. Getting it out is the problem. <laughs> problem. You know, I've got sci-fi, CGI, costume drama, cast of thousands, and you're going, it's 30 seconds, and I think the guy actually turned his head and asked to pass the popcorn when it was shown. So it's, it's who's valuing what, what, what cost. But if we can meet the passion with the right value of money, then you're going, you're, you're working, you could get paid more if you're working in industry. You're going, no, I want to be in control. I want to be the artist, but I want to have a business head on my artist sort of mind and realize that it has to pay the bills. It, no, it has to go beyond that and give me a certain amount of lifestyle that, you know, I can afford not to be stressed while working in my passion. And that's what our last few years of the first 50 shows, If you, I think you're probably one of our newest uh, <laughs> podcast subscribers, and you've, you, you joined in the business film series, but if you accidentally went back to episode one, you're going, what the feck are they shiting on about here? You know, what's this balance and fear? And, and what that was is, is people going into business for themselves and realizing yeah. now they have all the risk but they don't know what the reward is yet. And, but the reward is, we know we're on the journey to that reward. That's what you decided. You got, you got your film out there. You mentioned in a little text to me there yesterday that it could have been a budget of 20 grand. But you, because of your business head, know the real budget was 80. Because when you did your magic maths, that's what people believe. That's how, that 60 grand is how much people believed in you and your vision and your creativity. And that you want to pay back because you set it into thing going, we're on Amazon. And if that money comes back, these people, people. believed they're yeah. my investors. That's it's it. their share. And the next one is 500. And I know who my go-to team is. You know, uh, there's I, I something, see something very interesting. Stuff. Yeah. I mean, that I, Governor and I've had this conversation because one of the things that I did with, and the you're not allowed to talk, Sean, we're actually well, we, talking yeah, to each other here. We'll get, we we'll need get a guest sitting there so we can talk to each other because we're sitting I, I in sight of each other. I need other to bring now. it around so that so that so that Sean can actually answer. He, there wasn't even no, a question, there wasn't, wasn't even a question as there. well. Yeah, 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 absolutely. No, I've lost my track now. <laughs> no, 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 but what, what I what we did, you've You've talked about the fact that you knew who the elements were, you knew who those investors were, and you're working with them. And one of the things that I realized that was so important because everybody was saying to me, Oh, George, look, you know, don't worry about contracts or anything like that. And I went, I'm sorry, you can't, if you're not prepared to have the contract, which basically tells you that if you're, if the film makes some money, there is a small percentage, it's not very big, but you'll get something that, that there is a, there is a contract that's between us so we know what the expectations are because I had people working on my film for three days and they enjoy themselves so much. They wanted to come back. I said, no, you can't because you've got another job to go and do. And that's what you need to do. You've, you've committed yourself for three days. We really appreciate it. You'll actually appear throughout the whole movie as a character that pops up here and there. Um, and we really thank you for your time, but it, but it would be a use and abuse if we had you on here any longer than that. And those are things that, because people's excitement just say that they'll get into things. But sometime down the line, when somebody comes back to you and says, do you remember we worked on that film about 10 years ago? And I hear you've made 
550 billion pounds or whatever is it on it. I want my cut. And then if you don't have some kind of agreement between you so and him, do you, the question there's is, a problem there. on this movie, that's 60 grand that? of hope value, do you have contracts in place with them all? Or was that the admin comes after the storm? No, you can't do that. It, yeah, the contract great stuff, love it, perfect. Yeah, 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 no, you have to. And, and, the, and the thing is, you're both dead right. I mean, I suppose... The, the, the old cliche of film being a collaborative medium, it's one thing you just cannot do it by yourself. And if you're going to have to get people involved, you've got to be offering them something, you know, you, you can't, you can't expect people to put in the work, uh, you know, and, and not have anything out of it. And, and I am very much like, like yourselves, everyone should get paid. But in my own situation, it was a situation that like the film just wouldn't happen. So when I went to people, it was people that I had worked with before, people who I who 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 I consider my friends, pretty much all of them. Like they are all friends. Not anymore. Much, not anymore. Them, but they were then. They were then. <laughs> <laughs> pretty oh, much sure, all yeah. of them that I that I had worked with before. And and they believed in it. They they had they knew from the past because I had short films out. And like you were saying about about the feature film being a, a, a step to the 500 grand budget. The short films were the step to 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 beyond the woods because the short films proved that um, I could make award winning films and that I I would finish a film and that I would get it out there. I mean, it's it's one. It, there's so many people who start this process and then don't don't finish it. And the, the very least you got to do is for everyone who who put their effort in, you got to finish yeah. the thing, whether it's a short film or a feature film or whatever it is. It's got to be finished. It's got to go out there. If everyone's Unless people are getting paid, then they don't really care. But I mean, still, ideally, for your own reputation, you should get it out there. But uh, but they are all uh, investors in this film. And I told them at the start that I would not make this film if I didn't think that they would all get paid. Now, the thing is, as with another learning thing, is how long it takes to get paid because it takes bloody ages. I mean, it's like it's just ages and ages and ages. It goes through a distributor. They... T- they take all their costs before before anything is paid out, and then they take their percentage before anything is paid out after that. So you know, and then even when they're dealing with streamers or with um, the likes of HMV or all the rest, yeah, you know, they don't get paid. like it's not like you send in your invoice and you get paid a month later. That's not how it works. It, it, no, they, I'm, I'm going to ask questions. Because I still haven't got a straight answer from anybody, and I'm about two years into this. <laughs> how much <laughs> not how much it's like saying we know in the theatre it would have been 10 quid and the theatre gets X and there might be 3 quid share. forget all that we'll talk one language of streamer because I know if, you've got, if, you, if you're the beast on YouTube and you've got basically a million views you might get 700 quid you know so it's, it's, it's a 7 cent scenario for, actually I think it's 7 cents for every thousand views is a multiple if you were in YouTube in the ad space so if you were actually on let's say Amazon streaming prime there's a viewer so we know it's free to theirs but it's not because you're, I'm paying me 7 quid or 11 quid a month so it's what I watch They're, they've got their algorithm that clocks in that you got 300,000 views. I don't know if it's Lent dependent, a full view. Does a view, is a view, they watch the whole film or is a view, they actually turned it on. And in either scenario, do you, do you get 10 cents, 7 cents, 5? What do you get for a view that's recognized as yours in a streamer as an example so we can work backwards so we understand the magic maths? You'll have to ask me that in about three or four months because the only answer I can get at the moment You're is... You're meant to know going in, you have a contract. <laughs> That's it. No, I do. But, but the thing is, I have a contract with the distributor. And ah, the distributor, he has it. He's not telling you. That's it. He's not telling it. you. That's it. So it's like, I have to wait... I, I, I get in touch with them and they're like, oh, we won't know for another few months. Yeah. It's, you know, it's... Have it's, you any clue of... Expect- no, there you go. I thought I was doing a million views, a million quid... We have this unrealistic expectation. That's what everyone says. Yeah. Everyone comes to us and goes, my story is Blair Witch. Sure, you'll be a millionaire. And we're going, it got three views. You're going, yeah. we spent a million. Actually, the million to get a production million back is a hundred million customers required at 10 cent or wherever you want. You know, it's, they don't know the math. They think what they see on the box office is yours somehow. Yeah, you know, it's it it like like what uh, um, Sean and Stephanie were saying the last day. 
Yeah, watch the show. I did. I did. <laughs> there were Two great. viewers were laughing. Yeah. Wow, well, we're doing grand. We're doing grand. Um, yeah. uh, it was very interesting listening to what they were saying. Uh, Not and- us, of course. Very interesting what they were saying. They were saying. Yeah, well, what do we what you always say? What do you always say? But um, uh, the thing is, the, the the bigger, like they said, the bigger sales agents command the bigger fees, and and uh, any of the streamers pay you, you can you will hear any amount any amount it's bananas for for low budget films for for the, and the thing is even me saying that i made it um like for for less than 20 with friends means that they won't pay as much i'd be better off yeah. coming out here and saying it cost me 300 grand to make that's it it's a hundred we it. know it's really a yeah. hundred you know yeah, yeah that's, that's it but but it is you know it does all these things affect uh, you know, and then how good my distributor is at, at, at negotiating these deals, all that sort of thing, everything. And whether it's going in as part of a package with with them, with the, with the multiple films or whether it's going in on its own, how that's all divided up. You really it's 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 a funny thing. It's and painfully I it, ambiguous, isn't it? It's painfully yeah. ambiguous. And, and I see it even with the likes of Darren Aronofsky when he made Pi. I think he only paid his crew. Like about twenty years afterward, because like it took him that long to get the money from that film to 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 get to him, so as he could pay them. It's it's it is painfully ambiguous. And and I've talked to people. I know people who have sold films uh, to streamers, and you know, and and the money can be anything from like you know four or five grand all the way up to five hundred grand. You know, so like, and they're people that I would be talking to. I I know that that the same time as my film came out. There was another film, oh, what was it called? The Ritual. And and Netflix paid them five million quid straight off for that film. But when you look at the people who were involved in that film, there was big names involved in it. So, you know, it's not saying that that film is worth X times what my film is worth, but it is that they're thinking, okay, well, the people in these films are part of the industry, you know. It, it, so it's a different thing. So so if I was coming around with with the next film, it would be different again. You think you know? you're telling a great story now that an investor in indie production would like to be hearing? I know what I know what you're saying. Look, you can make you can make the money back, I, I, and from from the figures that I've seen, my. But film the whole has point been, is at the beginning that that's the difficulty we're finding. Two years ago, we've mentioned this a few times in our shows. The research said the investor in indie production had left the market. He's going to just invest in wind farms. He's going to invest in his own pension and get a yeah. 50% return on a cash account in a pension. He doesn't yeah. need to take any risk for anything for a 50% return. So yeah. if we are just looking at a million quid budget, we're going, that million, if it's Bob, if it's Bob and Joe, had to earn two million, pay tax at 50%, end up with a million to be able to put into your budget without any tax break because there's no tax break to that investor. So you're saying two million of earnings to put in a million at risk on an unknown payback or term or timeline. Yeah, it's a, it's massively high risk. It is it is high risk. There's no denying it, you know. And and if you were coming out, if I was coming out here to try and convince people to invest, then you'd 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 go about it a different way. But I but I am coming out just telling you how it is now on the on the. But that's hold just- on a second. You just said if you were doing, if you weren't being honest, you would have lied through your teeth to us if you thought we were the investor. <laughs> I, I would never be that type of person. I would You'd be ambiguous be enough. Yeah. To, I have a Blair Witch. Look what I have in my pocket here now. What we have is a Blair Witch. The Netflixes will love it, and you'll get your million back in six months based on the two million customers that'll watch it. And that well, the, Blair, the Blair Witch again. I keep saying, you know, yeah. ever, ever since the Blair Witch has come out, we've always been told just avoid that one because that's not a reality. It's the that was yeah. that was just oh, something that happened. That's the blip. Yeah. yeah, and paranormal activity. A lot of them are outliers. But but haven't said haven't said everything like that. I, I, the film, my film still has made its money. It's just I haven't got that money. No, all right. Now hold on a second. Let Let's go because there you go. I mean, how long? How much time and effort? If you were working in McDonald's or Little at ten quid an hour, or no, actually they're twenty quid an hour. They're actually very, very well paid. So of your hours of opportunity costs of investing in your dream, you haven't been paid minimum wage. But I, in, I did it as an investment. 
and the investments. So you're an investor who was willing to lose everything, which you did because you weren't paid. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Not yet, but I still expect I will be. I, I expect ultimately everyone will get paid. It's just slower. Yeah. And, and like you say, there are way easier ways of making money. Of course there are, like that's way easier. But the thing is, you, you have to be, people in the film industry are entrepreneurs as well as filmmakers, or they have to be. Like, like you say, someone coming to you with a script, everyone's got a script. I mean, I get, I get people send me, send, asking me while I read their scripts, and I'm thinking... You know, there's no point. You charge them, but, you get yeah. paid. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, the, but the point is, everyone has ideas. Yeah. Everyone has, you know. But but if you're making a film, it's a different thing, and you've got you've got your own uh, m- method or your own plans, which are great. They're original, and the, it's a it's a unique way of looking at things, which which all entrepreneurs should do: spin the thing around and and look at it from every angle. Um, and you look back in the old days, Roger Corman. You know, he, he the way he made movies and he pumped them out there. There were always B movies. Some of them are, are very entertaining and um, some of them aren't, but they all made money because he knew what he was doing because model. he had his whole he model. sales. Yeah. yeah, he had the model and he had the sales end of it set up. Yeah. That And that's the other thing. If you have the proper say, if you have the sales end of it set up, there is a massive demand for content, especially. There you go. The- it's a reverse engineering. It's going, yeah. it's the money yeah. wants good content. Good content wants to work out what's it's, but it's what we have is currently coming from the artist. We have the uncommissioned passion. Yes. That is not a content that was requested or asked for and doesn't actually know what it is itself because it hasn't been put through the first phases of this is a 10 million something you know, let's, or let's 20 million that. if you want to put A-list yeah. actors in it. Yeah. Let's just explore yeah. that in a slightly different way because, um, I mean, obviously, Sean, you've made a horror story. I think that's that's what... So you actually went for a genre. Why, why did you choose the horror genre in the first place? What what led you to it? It's it's not even that I chose it. Like, I've written at this stage about, about 16 feature film scripts and pretty much all of them are are in the horror genre except one or two that are in the science fiction genre it's just the genre that i grew up reading um uh, james herbert dean Koontz, uh stephen king they were my like as a kid they were the books i read and it seeps into the brain so uh, like in terms of films if you look at the dvd collection there there's there's every sort of film there every every genre but when it turns to when it comes to writing stuff um, or, or filming stuff, I tend to go that way. Even the short films, I've made, I've made plenty, but but a lot of them swing towards the horror because I, I just I enjoy it. You know, it's it's a it's an it's a form of escapism to a certain extent. People will always say it, there's a social commentary in there, but that to me isn't the primary element. The primary element. I haven't is- seen any of these now. Does it does it usually be everyone's everyone? No one escapes. It, or is there a hero in there that finally breaks it, makes it out alive, as they say? Or do you keep fecking everybody? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. But rare, right, rare good man, good it. man. Yeah, you go yeah, in yeah. here, you're not coming out alive. That's grand. <laughs> you mean, it's the body count it, that, and that's how it. long you last. That, yeah, that, 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 no, no, that's no, strange enough, Sean. I looked at some article from, I, I, I can't remember his name, Stephen Fellow. Is that his name, George? Stephen? Anyway, he's... Chairman yes. of the Central Film School or something. He does an awful lot of research in the industry. He had some bar chart the other day that was by genre showing this. It was red and green. And what this looked like was a horror movie because 90% of it was red. This loses, that loses, the other loses. Everything loses. And up the very, very little right hand side was two little green bits of bar that were maybe 20%, 30% in. And strange enough, it was sci fi and horror. And the more you combined them, working backwards was you wanted a zombie fest, sci-fi horror, um, with a little bit of comedy thrown in and and a bit of martial arts to just top it off. And you have yeah. the perfect combination. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. It's very, there's a loyal horror audience. I, I, I used to work with a guy years ago, an Italian guy, and he bought every zombie DVD. It doesn't matter whether he had never heard of the film, it was irrelevant. He was buying zombie DVDs uh, and, and that was it. Anyone comes out with a zombie film, 100 million film, one quid film, he's buying it. That's the level of loyalty. And you see, even with Beyond the Woods, there was a guy in, in England who made the 
who made the creature that's in the film. He, he made a model of it. Like, I don't know how long it took him, and he sent it to me. Didn't it's take him long. Didn't take him long at all. The wife was sitting in the other room. He kept on looking back and getting a bit of model. Yeah. <laughs> but there's something, there's something interesting, because basically, you know, the fans, as you say, will create, their creativity is, is coming through reproducing something they've seen in a movie. I mean, look at all the fan movies that you've seen because people want to be in those films. But those guys will just go out and do it, the same as anybody that's on motorbikes that re, you know, turn them into cafe races or or any of those things. Some of those hobbies, they would do them and they'll spend millions or thousands on them because that's their passion. And I think that's really what the filmmaking side of it is because a lot of people started out uh, in our generation with a Super 8 movie <laughs> just filming little things because that's what they they dreamed of doing and and there was that film eight millimeter which is a horror story in itself you know those sort of genres do excite you and you kind of you still want to do it i mean you know common sense probably says to me george why have you spent all your life being in the film or tv industry you're completely daft i just i get a big kick out of what i do i enjoy what i do and i and i can't give it up <laughs> that's yeah. the thing uh, so it isn't about common sense the other thing is it's just how do you generate we need to generate an in income out of it and one of the things i've always told a lot of my students is you've got to think of two things you have your passion and you have the thing that generates your income so that you can carry on doing your passion and that is a key thing and and i've I've worked as a lecturer, but in film and TV or media, and I've, I've done editing. Those are the jobs that got me the income so I could carry on doing the other side of it. And now I think we are getting sort of close to it. We're making stuff. That's the key thing. We're doing stuff. It may not be what people think is film, but still have to, still now, have there, to put those Sean, projects I'm together. The weird thing is you're, a couple of the conversations, even from uh, our last guests, as we said, was, we're seven years in. We're 10 years in. It's not that they're seven to 10 years in. It's they're that distance in because their dream and passion was actually dependent upon someone else's money. So if the money was there year one, you would have been doing it year one. It was, now, admittedly, we go, oh, well, I learned my passion more over these seven and seven year, 10 years ago. No, it's you would have, the minimum viable product says you would have been doing more and better them earlier on because you've done your learning before that you've done your earning before that you've done your shorts you, you're 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 ready then and you're ready now to go to the next stage it's what's the block the move to i said the block is still dependent on the next person that believes but that person is a decision maker that can empower or a suite of people or a studio or whatever else that commissions or seeks out but in the absence of them coming We've got to keep on doing, and we've got to we've got to do. Well, actually, you've touched on one thing there in the sense of you sort of know you know you you know yourself, and you know what you like. Therefore, you know there's a bunch of people like you, which are your potential audience, and they know what they like, and they'll seek it out. And your real journey is to reach through the social media and court your loyal audience. And that's where the crowdfunding hype stuff actually works. When you're able to communicate with them, that you're not going off with a begging bowl and saying, look, just pay me bloody wage. They're actually the fanzine bunch that goes, we want Star Wars, and I, or I think it's Terminator, and if you don't do it, we'll do it ourselves. You know, we'll just get the money together and do a version. So it's that... you. you how good on social media are you? How close to your next audience are you? What film is in the pipeline do you want to put forward that you know they're there, but you just can't talk to them yet? Yeah, it's true. It's it's become such an important thing that, uh, and also you, you have to be very genuine. You like you you have to be a fan yourself, um, and you have to interact with all these people if you want them. To, if you want them to believe in you and to support you, you, you need to be one of them, really. You know, I mean, that applies. Oh, I'm one of them, all right. I'm one of them. I don't know what, what, what it is, but I'm definitely one of them. One of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it is amazing how um, how much social media has... has, uh, has so are you on Twitter, yeah. Instagram, snapping? Are you TikToking off your head? That's what no, we want not, to know. Not, not TikToking. But, but I, I think... More important for for someone for someone we say at where I am. More important is, is it's networking. You know, it's meeting people. Very hard to do in COVID. I mean, in part, like you know, you can do it on a computer, but it's not the same. You know, like 
I go around to, and, and this is another thing Stephanie and Joel were saying, I, I do go around to the markets and I do go around to the festivals. And it's if you look at other people's success stories, particularly at the budget level that you're talking about, you know, we'd say half a million to a million quid. And um, it's networking because we, we, you, you get a sense of a person when you meet them, you know, face to face. So I, I do think networking is, is where because you even see it with people who have made, you know, who have got budgets and that who've got producers on board. It is through meeting people and and like even making my own film. It's through people I knew. And you just know, you know, you go on a set of making a feature film. It's a long process. You could, you could be working with these people for a few years and you've got to really know you're going to get on with them first and foremost, yeah. even if you yeah. have the money. I mean, if you're if you if, if, if they have the money, if you're working with someone with the money or if you're working with someone who's who's a filmmaker, uh, you have to get on. If one if one of those two is an asshole, then you've got two years of pain ahead of you. You know, it's like. You Jeez, really do. If, yeah. Now, there, if both of them are assholes, we're in trouble. You know, so is <laughs> <laughs> or else, or else you got a genius. Actually, speaker. the weird thing is, there, each of them is thinking, "This fucking asshole." You're going. It's, it's they don't. Neither knows who the other. It's the other one's the problem, not me. You know? <laughs> but that yeah. again is it's it's learning those skills of of people skills, how to work with people, and how to to get the best out of them, how to nurture them, and and I think that's now that's George. An I actually part of it. sorry, I remember something that Sean just sent on the hello, and I go, Sean turns out he's owned up. He's a multi schizophrenia. You know, suffers from multi schizophrenia. He's a VFX guy. He's a producer, editor, writer, screen. I think there's Minder or something that was out there. I wrote the team June, signed the team June. I'm doing it all because all those jobs and roles exist and they have to be done and there's no budget for them. Therefore, it's you. So you have to be a multi schizophrenia type individual to work in it's, film. It's called in, a multi hyphenated now. It's not. No, called they, that's what they called it. So they. <laughs> They changed the name to that. Changed we know name, it's yeah. multi schizophrenia because multi hyphenists just so they're a bit PC. Yeah, it's true. But the, but you could look at uh, Shane Carruth who did Primer, and he did even more. I mean, he he acted in the film as well. You know, so he he wrote, acted, directed, produced, did the VFX, did the sound. You know, built the props, did, did the whole lot. So well, so I'm well, not Gareth quite Edwards. that far there. Yeah, Gareth Edwards, who eventually did uh, Rogue One, and he also did uh, Godzilla. That that's what he did. He, his first well, movie. Well, you didn't do Monsters. it in Rogue One and Godzilla, Godzilla George. They were three hundred no, million a piece. No, hang on a second, Garvin. Yeah, just just yeah, I <laughs> know. Right, no, but he got to make those. Those are the films that he made after doing the the the, the multi hyphenated to do the film Monster, the first monster film uh, by going to South America and actually taking a small crew. The editor went with them. They're in a small van. And they had two actors and they just went and he shot everything. And then when he got home, he went and put all the little models in the in the bath and did all sorts of things to actually do the special effects because he was a special effects person that wanted to get into filmmaking. And that's what led him on his journey. <clears throat> so, again, that that most people are learning through doing everything because it's the only way you can get something done. Uh, and it can take quite a few years to to get a project to completion just because you're trying to find the time to. And if the technology keeps updating itself, that can also be a, a kind of problem. So are, are you finding yourself in that sort of role again with your next project? It, it, you know, how, how are things moving in that one? Well, ideally, I don't want to be in that role in the next project. I, I just finished the script for that um, about, well, about a month, or, a month or so ago. So I've sent it to a few people now. And Quick question. Is, What's the budget? Based on your understanding now, from the minimum viable product up, because you know all the roles, what's the minimum that could be done? And then everything after that as an add-on is a named something. You you could do it relatively cheaply. Uh, now, I will give you a figure in a minute. Um, the reason I say that is it is it is one of those holy grail of, 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 of micro-budget films where it is pretty much all one location, Pretty much two actors. I mean, they're, they're we're actors. loving it already. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's it is it, it, it it's, and it has this sort of conjuring style potential. Like it does have potential that it could be one of those films that makes multiple, like many multiples, what it costs to make it, and that's where the budget comes in because you could make this film with nobodies in a in a mediocre location. Probably for a, a couple of hundred grand, you know, you could make it. You, you could even scrimp it and make it even even less than that. If you want to add in some of the special effects that are in it 
and you don't want someone like me to do it where I'm not a VFX expert. I, I, I can do VFX, but I, you know, if you want to really have it nice and polished, you could add in another couple of hundred grand. So if you, it, I, I would think that the amount of money the film can make will depend on uh, how good the, the cast are and how good the VFX is and how good the location is. I was, I was thinking of it myself. I thought, okay, you could, you could probably find the house like I did with Beyond the Woods. You could probably find the house. You could, you could build the interior in a studio, but it's going to be more expensive to put it in a studio than it is to, yeah. to just use a, a location, you know? So there are multiple things that can... Well, that's the great thing. You're going into- through scenarios going, the budget's going up and the, the story is staying the same. The yeah. minimum viable product is staying the same. It's the, yeah. If we're in multiple locations, well, the getting to and the coordinating of the location manager is X price. Then you're saying, well, I was in the studio and waiting to build it, but I saved on the locations because it's, it's the, the, the accountant loves you already. The production line manager going, right, you know the two. It's not what you thought was going to save, and it turns out it didn't. The one you looked dear was actually cheaper when you brought in all the moving parts. Now, I'm going to throw in, because my background was business intelligence and effectively profitability. Budget buys profitability. But it doesn't buy... It's, it's, but I used to have the product managers and marketing people coming to me, give me budget for cappuccinos and muffins. How much can I spend? And I was going, there is a, they were going, give me a million. And I go, there isn't a million customers. So therefore, you want to spend a million quid in a market that doesn't exist. You just mentioned it's moving from 300 grand to 400 grand for a bit of X. The 100 grand differential on a 10 cent return is a million extra customer viewers required for that sentence. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Because you see it, you see it in certain films. I mean, you've got um, Vivarium, which is a which is a great film, and and uh, it has. Uh, well-known actors there, you know, with Jesse Eisenberg and um, uh, what, oh, what her name escapes me now. But not but as well brain, known as she thought she was. Anyway, yeah, she, is, she is. It's <laughs> just my my slow brain. But uh, but um, the what the film is like, and it's a great film. But it's a very it, it is like you say, sort of. A, there's an art house element to it. Lorcan Finnegan makes those sort of films, and I re- I really like his films because he does have a vision, you know. Whereas this film that that I'm my next film is definitely a more commercial film, but it's not a, it's not a cheat. I, I hate commercial films made for the sake of commercial. I mean, it, it is a film that delivers to a, a horror audience. Yeah. Like it's got new twists on, on, on different things that have happened in horrors and, and new, new scenes and good characters and good tension and suspense. It's, it's, it's not a cynical uh, move to say that it's it's a it's a commercial film. Well, but the great it, but thing it, is you're but, saying you have a bag of tricks. You're going to have one last chance dance my money is all in on this one. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'd be Otherwise, I'm going to get a job. Yeah, well, yeah, I don't know if that'll ever no, happen. No, I mean, a job but which I, prevents I, you ever pursuing, that's what happens. It sucks you into the 40, 50 hours of something, you get comfortable with a certain amount of money, and to come back out of that and then pursue your art will be very, very difficult. If it's a, I think that's where most of us are. It's If you're going to do one, do the right one and go all in. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's why it took me, that's why, it, like I said, I've written so many scripts because none of them were, were right. Some of them are great. They're great scripts, but they're just Beyond. not for now. They might be sometime in the future when reputation is established and you can do these films. But, but, but Beyond the Woods was right for when I made it. And this one is right for, right. for the, for the follow up. The both of them are right, you know, and that's, that's the difference. I, I've got, I, I've written, well, probably three or four other scripts between Beyond the Woods and this, which I'd like to make at some point, but I always knew they would require a higher budget and they're not like what I said, one location, yeah. a small, a small, like this film could be, I, I mean, even listening last week, listening to, uh, to mention the podcast again, but they were, you were talking about Cruz being Jesus like, Christ, like nobody, others. my own wife, I'm 90 episodes in, she won't listen to five minutes. <laughs> but they were saying about uh, cast and crews being like yeah. uh, 40 or 100 you know yeah. but I like I like to work on films that have small cast and crew I, I think the bigger the cast and crew you know it's you're, you're, it's not, yeah. yeah it is it is it's just it's it's a it's a nicer easier thing to work uh, not, and that's not saying that people are overworked I mean you can still do it you know with with the just with the with the crew that's that's required for something like this, which would be 
a, a single, pretty much a single location with a couple of a couple of cast. I mean, you don't need a hundred people following the Miranda place. No. You just don't need it. So, so what sort of size crew and equipment would you use? You know, how big would that get? Lighting and all that kind of thing in in that kind well, of project. Funnily enough, for for Beyond the Woods, uh, I used two cameras. There was two two cameramen on it uh, the the whole time, and the reason I did it was that there was a, a cer- I allowed a certain amount of improvisation, and I wanted to catch it. I it was something that I'd seen they they did in Coherence where there was more reaction shots than you'd expect, and I wanted the sort of I wanted to feel very natural. I. I wouldn't do that in this. So there would be just one camera, which means that you only need to light for one camera. That was that was the awkward thing with Beyond the Woods, having to light for two cameras. It, it made things a bit more complicated than you'd expect because, you know, of shadows and everything and keeping the lights out of the way. And then the sound trying to get the boom in with with, with two cameras, it, it made it more difficult. Um, but the, so, were the results, the pain worth the gain? In the sense yeah, of you saw case, where always. you could reinterpret where that happened and go, right, had you not got two, we would have missed all that. Yeah, what- 100%. Yeah. 100% it was right. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was very, like, I was very lucky. I mean, the, the sound guy on that film as well, Hugo, he, like, he, he, did, he did everything, like, from a sound. And, and, and I wouldn't have someone do that again either. I would definitely have people to help people mm-hmm. out. You know, like, you do need... Uh, you know, someone holding the boom, someone monitoring the sound, you, you, you know, someone helping yeah. with the setup. He's talking you do our model there, George. Absolutely, we have all absolutely. this sorted. Absolutely. That's yeah. great. <laughs> what, what about the editing process? Um, how long, you know, how long did the editing take? If you, how long did the shoot take and how long did the editing take? What, what were proportions were there? Interestingly enough, that, that also worked out differently to what I expected because uh, originally, I thought we could shoot the film in a week, in seven days, eight days, actually. I thought I thought we could do it in eight days. And I brought it to a friend of mine who's a first AD, but he's very experienced in the industry. And I remember sitting down with him and he said, there is no way in hell you can shoot this in eight days. It cannot be done. It's going to take you 13, 14 days minimum. And I was like, well, I have to shoot it in eight days because I only have the house for eight days. I only have the actress for eight days. They're all coming down, the cast, the crew, everyone for eight days. They're all working on, on, off their own bat. Um, but he was right because uh, by about the third day I thought there is no way in hell we could do this yeah. but it worked out really well because uh, because no one was getting paid everyone had to take time off to, 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 to do the film so it took another we'd say five or six months before I could get everyone together again to shoot the next part and in the meantime I edited uh, uh, and I had to do the editing myself like that for for uh, economic reasons. But uh, but I edited it and I realized little bits and pieces that I could add in to enhance it. It wasn't that there was stuff missing. It was just, well, this scene would be so much better if we just added in this little bit here and this little yeah. bit there. And another thing was I changed the costume for the for the for the kind of creature in the film. It had been a black costume, but it was completely lost in the dark. So it just looked like a float floating hands or floating head. So I, I changed the costume and reshot that, and it both of those things made for a much better film. But in, but in the end, the, the post production did did because it was solely myself. I mean, I did the I did the sound mixing, I did the the editing, the grading, the VFX, uh, you know, the whole lot. So it it took the guts of a year to get it yeah. to get it all done. You know, yeah. so so it was it was a longer process than it would be if you had. I'm going to be terrible and go. How much of that year was you? How much of the year? Oh, pretty, all of it. Yeah, but all is that saying that yeah. if you were working at 70 grand as a little manager, 70 grand on top of the 80 is 150 now? Yeah, yeah, you're dead right. You're dead right. But like I said, it's the investment. That 70 grand is the investment. No, what I'm saying is you wrote the story. Yeah. How much time did it take you didn't get paid? You VFX the story. How much time did you get paid? So if you said in terms of actual physical hours of you, in terms of you know weeks and months of a year that was you, you could have been doing. You could have been paid doing something else, and very handsomely in the industry. So you're going. You would be on a hundred grand salary in normal. You would be on two grand a week. What was the opportunity cost of you pursuing your passion? Yeah, I, I I get the point. I was doing this editing and VFX and all the rest while I was also yeah working to earn a living. So so it wasn't as if I was doing it eight hours a day for for yeah. that amount of time. You know, it was. But if you're if you're doing a rule of thumb and go, 
How many hours do you think of your life was in it? Yeah, God, that's a good question. I'd have to work it out. I mean, a lot, because like that, there is the writing of it. There is the planning of it. I've got I've got a box there behind me because I did plan it meticulously. I knew if we were doing it, it would have to be like I had, I had the shot lists. I had, I had everything meticulously planned so that we could go from one scene to the next. I mean, most films, you know, they say a minute a day or, you know, this sort of thing. But I mean, we were shooting like we would have been shooting some four or five scenes every day, you know, like that's the kind of level, yeah. but we could only do that because it was absolutely meticulously planned out. And because I was producing it and, and, and everything as well and, and continuity and everything, it, it meant that, you know, I had to work all that out in advance, even right down to the point of like, okay, we had one uh, girl of makeup who was amazing. She did both the SFX and just no, normal makeup as well. And uh, uh, I was thinking, okay, she's there in the morning. I've got to get the Brilliant. first. I love you. You're an accountant. You're a fucking yeah. accountant in disguise. Yeah. <laughs> going, right? Yeah. How long does that take? How long is a haircut? No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. Sorry, sorry. That's not. Good. Do you want to be cutting there? Get, get, a, get a razor. Fake that. Get a wig. I, I, I would <laughs> imagine that if you if you had that consolidated in time wise for editing, you would have edited that in eight weeks. The actual edit part of it, you probably would have spent another yeah. six weeks doing the special effects if you were doing a 40 hour week or whatever into it. And again, that's based on my experience because I was an editor and I knew that we were given those time slots. So I would say that you're probably full time. If you were full time on that minimum 16 weeks, maximum 20 weeks altogether. So, so that's that's where you could work out. The pre-production planning and the script. uh, No, we were talking about editing. We were talking about editing there, you know, in, in the script writing side of it, I bet you probably took maximum five weeks. To, yeah, to write the yeah. script, something like that. And then you had your pre-production. The models of doing it do tend to work out. You you can have two, if you talk about units, you can have two units for pre-production, including script writing, to one unit of shooting to about three or four in post-production, normally four if you're doing your special effects. So again, if, you, if you're doing sort of three weeks, you're talking about six weeks of time in pre-production time, and you're talking about, uh, I don't know, eight to 10 weeks in post. That's that's normally what, those are the kind of the markers that we would We're definitely to up to with. half a year of normal 40-hour week here. Though. Yes, definitely half a year. Definitely, I mean, you're 26 there you weeks altogether. But what I was trying to say was, there's a little trick whereby you invoice yourself, you pay a little bit of tax, you create the losses, you actually create a tax break because you're paying tax on something else, but you're not clocking in any invoices to actually get the benefit of what you're giving. So most people, because they're not charging for themselves, they don't charge for themselves. And therefore, as you said, to the Netflix, as they saw, it was 30 grand. No, it was 300. Because had you invoiced it in and gave us a director's loan, yeah. it would have been yeah. recognized with different tax breaks. You would be seen as the investor. You have to, you, your other taxes could have been, you know, depending on however you set it up, you would have been paying less taxes in your day job if you were actually investing back into yourself as, as, as something else. So most people, again, it's, because of the team involved and it's what it's all the known unknowns and the unknown unknowns we don't know what we don't know and therefore we didn't know what right looked like and we we cost ourselves twice the amount what i found with most of the jobs that i did i did actually um, very very specifically even uh, on current projects i'm working on i i work out my start and end times specifically to work out what the budget is because they're used as samples to help us educate and then predict what the costings are for further projects and i always i've, I've done that for the last 30 years or more and, it, and it's worked out really well because i'm normally as an independent filmmaker working for clients i've had to fight my corner with a lot of my clients to say why the price what why what their expectations have gone beyond is is what the problem is uh because most people underestimate how much it takes and costs to do something and when you tell them what their budget is and then they go and blow it but they usually blow it by three that's something i've discovered uh, throughout my whole career most people en- underestimate by uh, up to a third they, it's, it normally takes three times the amount of money than they expect because they've underestimated so many different parts of their project, which is why it is important to go and actually produce a budget in the first place. And, and I actually learned that at college 40 odd years ago, because we, we in my diploma film that I made at that particular point in time, uh, we were trying to work out the budget. And I was actually shocked that it 
it was actually four or five times the amount that I expected. But I managed to get a deal with a, a graphics department who then funded it because they said that was the deal. They'd give me that funding. So the film got made. But again, I learned very early on why you had to budget things and make sure you knew exactly. And we I think that's really where... We should talk about Sean's film now. I mean, I'm just thinking no, but, about 80% yeah. of this show is per Sean. He's got... Well, 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 no, I think good. we film his name Beyond the Woods or Little Red Riding Hood or something like that. I don't know what the hell it's about. Some horror. We won't mention that. We get back on to... Well, we know what we want to talk about. We're talking the about the thing. horror of filmmaking. The horror <laughs> of trying <laughs> to make a film. Exactly. Yeah. And and the fright you get at the end. And as you said, it's it's there's no... And you said everyone dies. So you're going, we don't get paid. Everyone died. Everyone's killed. Everyone gets burnt. Yeah, no, but you know you will because you're coming from this level of the micro success. That will pay back the small one, the 80 grand, the 20 grand. They will get paid. The next ask is, as you just said, is to 300. You're, you're coming up to the 300, the 500. You, your aspiration is, I, wouldn't, I don't want to be playing minimum because if this is one, my one chance dance, I'd like to do a little bit of maximum in it as well. So you're, you're probably courting the three to 500 sphere of going... I can do it for this, and the reason it's that price is it is the minimum location. It's a strong storyline. There's a bit of flashbang wallop, but it's gonna it's you're gonna be caught by the, the the dialogue and the story and the acting, and and that's we're not trying to distract you with you know flashing lights over there. So you're this is the one you're going out there to package. Are you going to do something different now going forward to get that? Because you it's how long is it going to take to get to make that? We don't want ten years. No, I would I would be hoping to be shooting it next year. I mean, the thing is, I suppose COVID is COVID has has changed the industry in terms of it's become more difficult. I mean, people are still shooting, and I, I was talking to a friend of mine who's a location manager, and he was saying there there at the start there was benefits to COVID because he could get any location he wanted. Yeah. A pub, yeah, no problem. A school, no problem. No, no customers, no two pupils. That's it. <laughs> you know, so like he was saying at the start, but I mean most. You know the the, the whole. Now, thing no about, insurance either. It turns out you can't get that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. Mm. But uh, yeah, it's it's um, you know. So I don't want to be making. Ideally, it'd be nice to be making it when it's easier to make a film when you when there's not the same massive restrictions as there are now. And anyway, it, you know, even if even if someone came along with the money tomorrow, you still wouldn't be shooting it you know before christmas highly unlikely maybe well, no, but the, the question to see the question is not you know if i gave you the money when you'd be doing it of course it'll be next week next year yeah yeah We're not, that's not the question it's it'll only be there's no problem getting your team together and paying them to go and wage it's how difficult do you think it's going to be for yourself based on your current knowledge of the industry and investment risk to attract that half a million quid i have more connections now than I did at the start, and I and I have people who are interested in it. I, I have, right, no, I, that's I, good. So I did. I did put a a, a TV series um, treatment together a while ago, um, and to uh, a producer in, in Dublin and a distributor in London, both uh, are, have been taking it out to to TV channels over the last while That's so crazy. so there is a now as to whether anything comes from it or not who knows but but the point is that they did take it and they're taking it to the to the to the market to the end users yeah. at the moment you know they haven't gone to the streamers they've they've gone to um terrestrial channels right now uh, and i've just left it to them to do no i'm gonna stop you there it's gonna be terrible because you're totally dependent upon someone else coming back and telling you whether it's okay to do what it is you want to do if they so we don't know when they're going to come back and we don't know what the answer is when they come back and therefore we're not doing it till they come back. What are you doing if they they're coming back right now? I'm firing you. There's it's a no from them. What are you doing? But that's that's the thing. I've got that and I've got this the feature film. And that's why you know you need to have a couple of eggs in the basket and the feature film is going to other people that both I'm connected with yeah. and people in, from the industry who would have done similar types of movies so i suppose getting even you know it yourselves like you, you you know i don't know how many scripts you get in you probably get loads of them in some of them are from people you know you're probably more likely to put them in the top of the pile 
But even getting around to reading them, you know, it's like, I mean, you're still it's reading fine. pages, 100 yeah. pages. It's time. It's money it. for it's nothing. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So it takes it takes time even to get to the point of someone. So then you go, you read the script and you say, I like this script. This is a good script. Where do you go from there? Like, do, do you decide, OK, well, you know, do I do I try and do a back of the envelope thing? Do I ask the person how much do they think? You know, where do you go from there? Wherever you go, it takes it takes a while to decide okay you, it still takes a bit of investigation before you 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 think okay i'm going to back this and and like you said with your accountant's hat on the the ultimate uh, test is or the the ultimate test is is it going to make you your money back and 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 is it going to make you more than your money back and is it going to make you you know what are what do you think the potential is and how do you figure that out and so all of those things anytime you send something out it usually ends up being two or three months before you hear anything back. So you, you've yeah. got to be working on other things at the same time. It, it's a long, it's a long game. You know, it, it, it really is. So ha- I would be confident enough that it will get made. Um, but you ask me again in three months after I've heard back from people and after it's, it's either going here or there. Or not. I have a lot of, I've, I, like I say, I have a lot of connections in the industry that, that, that can, help me push things along and i have i have ways of, of getting it to other people if that doesn't work so i and you know so it, it is it, now the great thing a, about all that is you've got all those connections whereas an awful lot of the writers coming from that direction up are just sending it out there going huh, you know don't know what it is it's i know it's great because i wrote it but I don't know if it's a million, I don't know if it's two, I don't know if it's three, I don't know if it has an audience, I don't know if it's in demand, and I don't have those connections, and I don't even know if it's on the bottom of the pile or the top of the pile. True, true. and that, But that's where Beyond the Woods has gotten me, because I before Beyond the Woods, I would have been in the same boat. Whereas once you have something made and something that's out there and something that's doing well and been distributed... Now it's you, time to leverage that. You need to go out there and network, network like a nutter while that's it's it. hot. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, unfortunately, we've actually reached uh, the hour and five minutes point, so we're going to have to sort of wrap up, <laughs> as we always it have flew, to do at some flew. point during the show. Mm-hmm. And it did fly, and we were gaining, you know, th- there's such a lot of rich information there. It's really good that we've kind of discovered, you know, you've, you've talked about, uh, what, about 10, 16 films that you've actually written based in the horror genre. You're passionate about the horror genre. You've gone out and you've made loads and loads of short films, and that gave you the next step up to making your... Uh, horror movie the uh, beyond the woods film that you've actually made that is now actually on uh amazon which is really really brilliant to hear that you've also discussed the issues that uh, we were discussing before about distribution that that there are you know issues with once they've taken their 50 percent uh fee then they've taken their expenses out of the other 50 percent quite often the producer can end up with next to nothing and it does make it very difficult to know whether that's a good viable project to be actually working on or not. But you've also discussed with us that, you know, it can take a look if, if, if you're not getting a project made and time's going by, it's taken like seven, eight years to some of the projects that to, to get off the ground. You actually feel that you need to go out and make something just to prove that you can do that. And although the accountant in Garvin would often say, no, no, you can't do that. Sometimes you feel, well, if I don't do that, no one's going to see that I can do this and how am I going to get a break and get into the industry? Because a lot of people do work on the premise. It's whatever your last project was. We've also discussed the issues of budgeting things and trying to make a, keep a handle on everything because that's that's the big problem is making sure the thing doesn't go over budget. But the interesting thing is that um, we were talking about the horror genre, but we got into the horror of the film business, which I think is what most of our audience is going to be interested in sort of listening to. So before we do go, any last words, Sean, you'd like to just say to maybe our potential audience, the other person that listens to our show? Yeah. <laughs> well, I suppose if if you're into film, just keep 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 at it, you know, keep at it and uh, keep positive. And like you were saying, the, it's a good thing to, to remain positive it's an easy industry to get down about and just surround yourself with positive people 
and uh, get out there and network and meet people who can who you can go on this journey with together. Now, I'm going to show the negativity in. It's not the negativity. It's just Sean keeps on telling me that everybody dies at the end. So I'm going, how do you say positive with that one? But again, it's so true. Don't go into the woods today. That's Don't it. go into the woods tonight. That's <laughs> it. All right, Lou. Thanks, everybody, for watching and listening. Uh, this show goes out on a Friday. We hope to see you again next Friday. And thanks, Sean. And thanks, Garvin, for being with us today. Bye for now. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications. 